Documented to be almost always right. 99.8% of the time, that's the latest opinion audit from the opinion auditing firm Sullivan Group in Northern California. They only audit my opinions, by the way. You can't ask them to audit yours. It's an exclusive deal. 99.8, almost always right. Great to have you here, folks. Telephone number is 800-282-2882 if you want to be on the program. The email address uh, El Rushbo at eibnet.com. Did you see, grab, in fact, grab, grab audio sound by, let's start at number four here. I saw this headline today. Men used to whistle at me, and I wasn't happy about it. You know who said that? That'd be Muchel Mabel Obama, while twirling on the dance floor down doing the tango. In uh, Argentina, First Lady Michelle Obama has been the victim of sexism, she said Wednesday, because men used to whistle at her while she walked down the street. This is yesterday in Buenos Aires, Argentina. By the time I started school, I began encountering people outside of my home who had less faith in my ability to reach my goals. Right. Teachers who yeah. didn't think that I was smart enough yeah. and would call on the boys instead of the girls, even though the girls had better grades. People who thought a girl shouldn't have ambition, and they would ask my brother what career he planned to have, but would ask me what kind of man I wanted to marry. You know, this is what's incredible here. You're, you're dealing with, with a woman married to the most powerful man in the world. I mean, this is an exalted position. Presidency of the United States is the pinnacle. Uh, if you look at politics as a business, uh, it's the pinnacle. In any other realm, uh, to run around and after almost eight years serving a, a, a co-leadership role in terms of leader of the free world, to still be walking around with childhood grievances, to whine about childhood grievances, to continue to push some corrupt leftist agenda to claim that she hasn't gotten over the horrors of being a young girl in this reprobate place called America when she was growing up. And here she is on foreign soil telling everybody essentially what an unfair, what a rotten, what a sexist place she grew up. But there's hope. There's hope. And I'm sure she says and is thinking, the women of Argentina, the young girls of Argentina, you're facing the same thing. And she stands there as an example of all of the horrors that can be overcome. I tire. I, I tire of these people running around the world essentially telling everybody that they can get to listen to them what a horrible place their own country is. And if you listen to Michelle Obama, you would think... That all of this discrimination and all of these horrors, she's sitting as first lady of the United States and she can't get past it. She can't get over it. She wants, I'm telling these people are bitter. They have not gotten over it. They, all of this is personal. And they haven't gotten rid of their anger. They haven't gotten rid of whatever resentment chips on their shoulder they harbor. Here's the bit about sexism. being. Do you know how many women would love being whistled at walking down the street? Am I going to get fined for that? Am I out of touch observing that? Seriously, Mr. St sadly, you know, sadly, I might be on the edge acknowledging that, yeah, the wolf whistle. You know, okay, so you've got your average American construction site. And you have your average American construction worker. And every woman in the world knows if you go walking by there, you're going to get whistled at. And yet they walked by. Uh, depending on time of day, it doesn't matter. They're all going to get whistled. The idea that, that that is discriminatory? This is what's wrong with the modern era of feminism in the first place. Is it takes normal, natural human nature and tries to corrupt it. Or say that it's corrupt. Or perverted. And then use the power of government to force people to behave in ways that violate basic human nature. I'm sorry, Mrs. Obama, but God made me a man. And as such, I can't help noticing a woman who I think is attractive. 
I'll be damned if I'm going to shut up and not tell her so. But boy, if you do, you're insulting her brain as though she doesn't have one or engaging. So, so now no wonder men don't go to college. Who wants to be victimized by this kind of stuff? Here's what she said about it. As I got older, I found that men would whistle at me or make comments about how I looked as I walked down the street. The as horror. if my body were their property. Oh, come as if on. I were an object to be commented on. I began to realize that the hopes I had for myself were in conflict with the messages I was receiving from people around me. Messages that said that as a girl, my voice was somehow less important. That how my body looked was more important than how my mind worked. Folks, this is 1969 stuff. This is 1969 stuff that she is spewing here. Modern era of feminism, and feminism, it dates back, I'll never forget it, I know that's the year, 68, 69, 70, that period. Because I happened to become a man in those years, I will never forget. You know what the horror is? Try being a guy with women thinking all this. Noticing them is offensive. Noticing them is sexism. Just simply noticing them is subjugating them. And, but, but, but still think about it. First lady of the United States and to still be walking around harboring this kind of resentment and then trying to pass it on and trying to inculcate young skulls full of mush in Argentina with the same rot gut about what a horrible place the United States was. I mean, if you listen to Democrat campaign, it still is. It's one of the most amazing things. You listen to crazy Bernie. You listen to Hillary Clinton talk about just the last seven years. Seven years they controlled. Seven years their policies reigned supreme. Seven years they had everything to do with defining. And listening to them talk about it, it's astounding. And then the piece, de resistance. She was not finished until this. Eventually, I just got tired of always worrying about what everyone else thought of me. So I decided not to listen to the Stop voices. Stop the tape a minute. You're still obsessed with what people think of you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be saying any of this. That's the whole point. All right, re it at the top. Actually, there's no re It's digital. It just happens. Here, play it again. Eventually, I just got tired of always worrying about what everyone else thought of me. So I decided not to listen to the voices of those who doubted or dismissed me. Instead, I decided to listen to my own voice. You see, women here in Argentina and in the U.S. face so many of the same struggles. We struggle to be paid equally for our work. No, I need more. We no, struggle no, no, to no. balance the needs of our family with the demands of our jobs. We struggle to stop domestic violence and abuse, terrible crimes that have no place in any country on this planet. In this woman, I notice speech patterns because I'm a... I'm a highly trained broadcast specialist. I know this stuff. And I have, from the first speech this woman gave as president, she was talking about the struggle. We could go back to the soundbite archive. The first speech she made was talking about the struggle. Capital T, capital S. The struggle. And it hasn't stopped nearly eight years in, and the struggle continues because that's the key. The struggle never ends. The oppression never ends. There's never victory. You never overcome anything. There are always going to be villains. There are always going to be people out to stop you. You can never, ever be happy. You can never, ever achieve anything. You have to keep people on edge. You have to keep people thinking that the world is stacked against them. You can't inspire people. You can't motivate people. you got to tell them how the rest of the world in your own country, in fact, is nothing but a bunch of reprobates. What a message to take internationally. One of condemnation in your own country. One of dispiriting negativity. It's just, it has always amazed me. It's not just her, by the way. It's the entire American left. It's why they're never happy. You never run into one that's happy. You never, in, in fact, if you're happy around one, you are provoking them. But I just, I, I just find the, the whole, what's the mindset? Says, Let's go to Argentina and tell everybody how rotten we have. You're president and first lady. Millions of Americans ostensibly 
agree with you, supported you, love you. They elected you. The majority of your fellow citizens, you run around the world running them down. I don't understand the mindset. Well, I do. No, I totally understand the mindset. And it's something so foreign to me that it takes great effort to understand it. And I know I will never be able to relate to 